Today I'm back in Melbourne, Australia, checking out a 27-foot floor plan built by iconic tiny homes. This floor plan not only features a second story with two bedrooms, but it also features one of the most functional layouts I've seen on a main floor in quite a while. Let's check this tiny home out. When you step through the front door, you enter the back of the tiny home, which gives you a really awesome view straight forward of the rest of the main floor. As you can see, the color pattern they used in here consists of really bright natural colors. So you've got a nice tan herringbone floor, white on the walls and the ceiling, and then you have natural wood tone accents on the stairs and the countertops. At the back of the home here, what you're first gonna see is this little desk layout area, which is something that's not often included in a tiny home. The desk area has lighting up in the ceiling. It's got a nice big countertop that's gonna allow you to do plenty of stuff within this workspace. And you have a little bit of room underneath the countertop where if you had to store something onto the right side, you could as well. This area is perfect for someone who works from home or just needs that extra bit of office space, especially when in a tiny home where space is already fairly limited. Right above this desk area, you're gonna see that they have a Mitsubishi mini split heating and cooling system. You not only have one of these on the main floor here, but you also have one upstairs in the bedroom, which I'll show you guys later in the video. Now behind me here, you can see that there's a really nice accent wall with the ribbed cedar design. And in front of that, you have the staircase that leads you upstairs. And something that's very common, but also very appreciated in tiny homes is that they've implemented storage space underneath each of the steps here. So up top here, you've got a large slide out drawer. Towards the middle here, you have shelving where I've put my camera bag. Towards the middle here, another slide out drawer. And below it, a smaller cabinet. And finally at the bottom here, the first and second steps also have sliding out cabinet doors. Now as we take our first couple steps towards the middle of the tiny home, you're gonna find a couch off to the one side and the start of the kitchen off to the other. So let's check it out. Now the living room and the kitchen is definitely my favorite space in this tiny home. And it is for a couple of reasons. Number one is this couch. I don't think I've ever seen a couch this long in a tiny home. The couch is easily over seven feet in length and it also has four huge drawers underneath where you can store plenty of stuff out of the way and out of sight. Behind the couch, you do have an LED light strip up here that's gonna splash onto the white wall and give it a really nice glow. And off to the right hand side over here, you both have two 40 volt plugs and USB plugs on the wall. And now off to my right hand side, we have the beginning of the kitchen. Over here is a massive countertop that doubles as your prep space and your dining space. Below the countertop, they put in two different stools and then above it, you have a nice big window that you can open up and let that fresh air in. Once we move past the dining area, we finally arrive in the kitchen. And this kitchen has literally everything you're going to need inside of a tiny home. And it's almost to the scale that you would find in a residential home. Off to my right hand side, you'll find a big stainless steel sink. And above that is my favorite, which is a window looking outside. To the right of the sink, you'll have a nice floor to ceiling pantry with six individual shelving units that are all adjustable as well. Below the sink, you have your traditional storage that you would find in most tiny homes. And as we move further to the left, you'll actually find a dishwasher. Yes, this tiny home has a dishwasher. Now, normally dishwashers inside of tiny homes take up that much needed storage space, but because of how big this kitchen is and how much storage space you have around the sink and other areas of the kitchen, this is a perfect add-on to the kitchen space because who likes doing dishes anyways? Below the dishwasher, you have another storage space in the form of a drawer. And then to my further left, you have three individual drawers that slide out, giving you more storage space. And now turning around from the sink, you'll find the second half of the kitchen. So to my furthest right, you'll have a spot for a fridge. No, it won't be a residential style fridge, but it's a large enough space where you can fit a good size fridge and have enough space for everything you need. And then right in front of me is a second large counter space, which is a huge benefit, especially inside of a tiny home. This means you can use the space that I just previously showed you for dining, and you can use this space for all of your food prep. I am a huge advocate for adding as much counter space and prep space inside of a tiny home that you possibly can. Above this counter, they also have a window that'll swing out here. And to my right, you'll find a two burner cooktop. And given the fact that they have so much counter space in this tiny home already, I think they could easily get away with a four burner cooktop here without sacrificing too much of this prep space. So that is one thing I would change about this kitchen. Below the cooktop, you do have an oven as well. And then you have storage in the middle here, a really large storage space. And then all the way to the left here, you have three more drawers, very similar to the other side of the kitchen. And one thing I love is that all of the cabinets and the drawers are soft clothes. 
One thing you may have noticed in this kitchen is that they don't have overhead cabinets like many kitchens do. And that's because we have a second story in this home, which is gonna bring the ceiling height a little bit lower to accommodate the bedrooms upstairs. And finally, at the front of the home, you're gonna find the bathroom. So much like the living room and the kitchen, this space is also very spacious. Off to my right hand side, you'll find the vanity with an overhead mirror. And off to my left, you'll find this little countertop, which has room for a washing machine below it. And then you can utilize this countertop for folding that laundry. Then directly to my left, you'll find your toilet with a little window above it. And behind me, a really large floor to ceiling frosted window pane. So not only can it vent this room, but it also brings in natural light from outside. And then to my right, you have a very large glass enclosed shower. And now that I'm looking at it, you actually have tile inside of the shower and you also have tile in the floor of the bathroom as well. One thing that I do find is missing in this bathroom is storage space. I guess you could build some sort of shelving unit over the washing machine and use that as towel storage or get creative maybe around the vanity. But that is one drawback from this bathroom space is that there's no obvious storage locations for the things that you need in your bathroom. Overall, the main floor definitely has everything I would need and more inside of a tiny home. From the storage locations, to the amount of prep space you get in the kitchen, to all the windows in here that bring in the natural light, I could easily see myself living in this space. But before I get ahead of myself, let's check out the upstairs. Now, as you make your way upstairs, this space is really nicely lit with the window pane seen on the door here, and you get a little window pane against the wall leading up the stairs, and finally, at the top of the stairs to the right, you get a third window pane. All this natural light is really important. And the reason for that is as you come upstairs, it's quite tight up here. So if you're claustrophobic, this may not be for you, but let's go check it out. Okay. So it is a little tight. And as you can see, you can't stand up, but this space is still very functional and I'll show you why. So in this space, you still get a fairly large bedroom. So this is the first bedroom. This is what you're gonna walk up and see. You have space for a queen size bed here. You've got a nice big window on that side of the room and on this side of the room. So you can swing open both of these windows and have a really nice cross breeze. You've got LED lighting recessed into the ceiling, the same herringbone floor that we saw downstairs. And you get this nice space right at the foot of the bed, which you can customize with either cabinets, shelving. You could put a TV on the wall here. They do have TV hookups down below here. So yes, it's tighter in this area, but still very functional. For reference, I'm 6'4". I'm sitting upright and tall at the foot of the bed here. And I have enough room above my head and of course, tons of room side to side. Now let's head over to the second bedroom. All right, welcome to bedroom number two. So more or less, this is pretty much the same layout as that first bedroom. However, you do get a couple more goodies in this room. First of all, you get three windows in here, one on either side of the bed and then one against the head of the bed. Next, you'll notice this on the wall over here. So you do get a mini split heating and cooling upstairs as well as the downstairs. This is hugely important because this space I'm sure would get fairly warm on a summer day. And then behind me here, you actually get cabinet space where you can store clothing, which is a huge bonus. Once again, you can fit a queen size bed in this space as well. You have the same ceiling height as you do in the first bedroom, the same style lighting, and overall the same kind of space inside the second bedroom. And when you take into account the windows surrounding the bed, it actually makes this space feel a little bit larger than it really is. So despite this being a little bit smaller up here in the second story, I think it's still a very functional setup for sleeping. And personally, I would be comfortable enough with this being my main sleeping quarters. But I'd be curious to know how many of you would actually be comfortable up here. So let me know in the comments. All right, that's all I got for you today, guys. If you or someone you know is looking for a tiny home like this and you wanna get in contact with Iconic Tiny Homes, I have left all of their contact information, including their website, down below in the description. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.